you have to be motivated to do something like this and if, if you can achieve things like this then other things in life can seem quite easy. Um, there's times when you really be wondering why you're doing it. You know, what, why are you pushing yourself through this? Why are you, why are you telling anybody to keep going? But you know, at the end of it, it's because you really want to, and, and that's the same. You can you can apply that to different things in your life. If you really want to do something, then you can. You know, it's going to be hard, but you know, just crack on and and persevere. Everybody be thinking the same thing, everybody be having doubts, but everybody's also here to, to complete it. I'm Ange uh, and I organise All Points North. Hi, I'm, I'm Rupert, I'm one of the Cadiz Ambassadors. I'm up here in Sheffield to ride the All Points North race. In a nutshell, well, it's a thousand kilometre ride through the north of England, starts and finishes in Sheffield and there are 10 checkpoints to visit along the way. I think that you're going to run out of time because really there is no final time limit. We'll just, if we're not over there, then we'll just stand beside and see. Mostly with you. <laughs> I, got to, I got to that hill and I went, oh, maybe it's not down there. <laughs> Have you seen how steep it is? It is, yeah. <laughs> First thought about putting all points north on. I mean, this year it's running in September, but usually it runs at the end of May. And we always kind of envisaged it as a, a precursor to people who wanted to that stepping stone onto something bigger like transcontinental. So I wanted to try to recreate that feeling of making sure that riders at least got a chance to ride through the night or to give it a go on the first night. That, yeah, that was kind of the idea behind that, really. Sunrise is always great. I like to be out when it's dark and then see the sunrise. That's always, I think, a better option than, than seeing the sun go down. Sometimes seeing the sun go down makes you think, you know, it's, you've got to finish. But with this type of thing, it's, it's only you know, that's the harder bit starts, so you've got to, you know, get your mind around.
I'd love to say that it was completely my idea, but I, I pinched the idea from a race that I did in France about, about four years ago now, called Normandy Cat, um, which is a race around Normandy, 900 kilometres, similar kind of thing. And I just thought, why is nobody doing anything like this um, in the UK? I seem to be stuck on 160 and 170 for forever. So when's that going to pass? I kept looking down, point one, point one. I've had a few messages from mates that I ride with. You know, you know. What did they say? You know, good going, well done. You know, they've obviously gone to bed and then got up and seen where I am. Good progress. I'm pretty much on on target for the times. Yeah. How was the early morning shift? Was it all right? Was the it wee all right? hours. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. It did get a little bit cold. I thought about getting my brought some four finger gloves, but then it was. But then it would have these weird pockets of warm air. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You'd be riding along, and then all of a sudden, oh, it's nice and warm. Mm. And then you'd get cold, but then there'd be a climb, so you'd warm up. We've got a control right up on the Scottish border in the Otterburn Ranges. The control is right next to the ranges and so the ranges will be firing for some of the time this weekend. So the riders, as part of their research for the route, have to look up the firing times. But it was lumpy as F. <laughs> up, down, up, down. It's so lumpy. With the roots and, and the choice being yours and, and not a, a, you know, one that's already set out, it was, I spent a bit of time seeing the different routes to the checkpoints, how far each one was from each other, what was the shortest distance, what was the flattest, did I want to go flatter if it was longer or did I want to cut across because there were some bigger climbs. Um, sort of married it all up with what I thought, I, what I think I can do. Um, there is, it is lumpy, it's not flat, but um, that would break up the monotony, I suppose. There'll be some respite if they're slowing down, going down the hills, but just obviously need to be aware if it's very dark, the descent need to be slow as well as going up sort of thing. But um, I know some of the area because I used to live up this way, so I've chosen bits and pieces that I'm familiar with. The A66, because I know that area quite well, I thought if I can get there on the night, I could probably chub it down there pretty quickly, I thought. Um, there wouldn't be a huge amount of traffic, I could be on the extensions, I could get that stretch of 30 miles on a dual carriage road, which I'm used to with time trialling, and really, really put the effort in. But obviously I didn't think I'd be that fatigued by then. How many times I thought about warm beds, coffee. <laughs> um, once the sun's up it'll be much better. It's really tough. This year we've got Honister in there as a climb so that's going to be pretty tough depending on whereabouts they you know whereabouts they decide to put that in their route. For me it's all about the distance. I like to ride a long way. I, I mean I rode my longest ride ever. You know, the most I'd done before was 200 and, I did 200 and, I did 287 in the 12 hour. And then I rode 290 on a practice through the night ride the other month. And I thought, well, I, I could easily ride to 300. If I can get to 300, I get 350, 400. And then it just sort of goes from that. So I like to, but the climbing. The 
some other climbs I was thinking, well, why do people want to do these? I mean, these are hard. <laughs> these are really hard. My arse is in bits. <laughs> My legs don't feel too bad. It's just sitting on the saddle. That was tough coming up here. Might find some uh, oomph. If I stopped I couldn't get I couldn't get back on. I'd lost the ability to clip in the more tired I got. So my foot would slip off the other pedal and then I'd I'd just get off. <laughs> oh, no. How many hours roughly did you sleep? Uh, I didn't. I did forty minutes. And sixty hours? Yeah. I'm not planning on getting very much sleep myself, really. <laughs> nervous? Uh, yeah, I'm nervous for everybody else. Knowing that you can, you, you can get through it is, is part of it. I really thought I could do two nights. I thought I'm stubborn enough that I could ride through for two nights. We started late, so that didn't really count, sort of thing. Then it was the next night, if I could do all through that, and right to the end, 60 hours, by the get done. But obviously, uh, the fatigue played a bit more into it than, uh, than I thought. That sunset and after that, you know, I had hours in the dark where I felt like I was consistently on a loop. I'm sure I've just rode down here. Oh no, have I done a loop? Have I come back? So I'm sure I've just done this climb, a descent, a climb, a descent. And they all looked the same, all, all the flowers and the trees looked the same when they weren't weird shapes because I was tripping a bit. That was the last one, that was an absolute mission. Let's get that. The roads just, just look all the same, don't they? <laughs> you, you, I just think, have I been up here? I've just been up here, haven't I? Same stuff. That's what plays with your mind when it's dark, doesn't it? <laughs> just knowing that I can get, get it done. You know, I had, I had in my mind that I could do 60, I could do 60 hours. If I get under 60, I'd be really pleased. I just, just went over with the, the fatigue and not knowing what I was doing by the time I got back to Sheffield. But I'm really pleased that I did.
No, because it's not me. I couldn't live it down. <laughs> I couldn't. Oh, sorry. <laughs>